We, the members of the lay panel of the Boston Consensus Conference on Biomonitoring, have spent the last two months considering the exposure of people to chemicals and the related risks associated with them. Therefore, we have identified and agreed on the following five priority areas of concern as warranting further exploration and consideration as the use of human biomonitoring expands. They include establishing responsible surveillance programs, using biomonitoring data to influence corporate and government behavior, educating the general public about biomonitoring, addressing the issues of ethics, confidentiality, and disclosure, and some final thoughts on public policy. In addition to the federal surveillance program, general statewide biomonitoring programs are useful because the CDC program gives a national snapshot but does not indicate what is happening in states or regions. Collecting statewide data seems to be the next step in data collection. We believe biomonitoring data can influence corporate and government behavior by highlighting the public and environmental health concerns related to exposure to chemicals. For example, we're hopeful that companies and government researchers will find that biomonitoring data stimulate innovations in green chemistry, the development of alternatives to potentially, potentially toxic and persistent chemicals. There needs to be a wider discussion about protecting the privacy of this type of information and to what extent confidentiality can be maintained by the researchers and those who seek to apply this data to develop public policy. It is the consensus of the panel that information derived from biomonitoring, as with genetic testing, for example, uh, should be statutorily exempted from being transmitted or shared with employers, insurers, or others as part of the medical history without the express written consent of the individual. And specifically, it is recommended that legislation be enacted to ensure this. Um, my name is Aleha Campbell, and I actually work with a nonprofit organization called The Movement. And we deal with a lot of um, the poorer provinces in developing nations. And I wanted to know what I need to be aware of or look out for when we help the neighborhoods um, clean the areas. And if you had any suggestions on that. Basically, you want to know what biomonitoring is not for and avoid uh, uh, false or unreasonable expectations of it. It will show you what presence what the presence of the toxic chemical is, but uh, um, what you should know is that there are other uh, aspects of whatever you're trying to accomplish for whatever community that are just as important. If you want that, uh, those results or that data to mean something, there's just some, uh, some planning beforehand and education about uh, what biomonitoring is and what it isn't. From WBUR's health and science reporter, Alan Cockle. Tom Burke of Johns Hopkins School of Public Health in Baltimore led a recent national panel on biomonitoring. He says this report will make a difference. I think this panel has shown to some degree of surprise to the scientific community that the public can really understand the issues and this panel has moved biomonitoring forward. The success of this uh, model really depends on how uh, widely the rest of the society and, and uh, the policymakers uh, hear about the decision that we, we, we reach. When we made our final declaration on the final day, um, there was a you know fairly broad range of uh, folks in the room to, to listen to what we had to say. Not just people in Boston, but people who have been involved in biomonitoring from around the country were involved in various ways to, to help us uh, learn more about the issue. Um, learn about how it's been implemented in, in, in other programs. If uh, this kind of consensus decision making is implemented in the future for other issues, um, we I think I learned a lot of lessons. We learned a lot of lessons about how it should be done, um, you know, how it should be broadly disseminated. The, the decision should be, um, it should reach a lot of folks. I think it was a success, yeah. I think the consensus conference was important because, first of all, because of the issue. 
Um, it's one of those issues that goes across lines. Um, you know, we have pocket neighborhoods in Boston. We, we have a, a city that at times, you know, works together and goes home to very distinct neighborhoods. But the reality is that we share a lot of things in common. We breathe the same air. We're all in the same places. We can be exposed to some of the same chemicals and things. And most people in general are concerned about their own health and the health of, you know, their children or their, their grandchildren. So for us to come together at this time and make recommendations and be able to address a tough issue, um, I think was a really a, a good moment for us. And I think it also demonstrates that lay people can come to understand an issue in enough depth so that we can make kind of an informed decisions and recommendations about it. The Consensus Conference findings are an important opportunity for scientists, public officials, advocates, and others to hear the voice of the public on key questions about the use of biomonitoring. The lay panel clearly understood the complex information presented to them and raised concerns and issues not discussed in the literature or by expert panels. Their diverse backgrounds and experiences offered a unique and insightful perspective on this important topic. Consensus conferences are a powerful model for gathering much needed public input on complicated science and policy issues. For more information on the panel's findings, on consensus conferences, and on biomonitoring, see www.biomonitoring06.org. Thank you.